We is live right now. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. This is the Straight Talk Morning Show. My name is Andre Hill Sr. and my co-host and engineer, Andre Hill Jr. Grand rising, everybody. Man, you got to let me say grand rising, man. Grand rising. Grand rising, folks. <laughs> All right. All so right. So we Sunday. also have two guests, um, uh, Barry uh, Littleton, a uh, renowned expert uh, ufologist uh, and historian of how the black DNA is involved in an in extraterrestrial uh, reality. And, and uh, Barry, I know we got, um, uh, you, you know, I've been running across some material that there, there are quite a few uh, uh, black, uh, dark skin extraterrestrial groups that has a some, some serious influence on this ET exchange. Um, so also we have Kimberly Brown. Uh, she's going to give us some some economic information. Um, you know, this show was initially started based on economic empowerment uh, for uh, the people that have been at the end of the bus or the back of the bus for a very long time, Black folks. And, uh, you know, in, in order for all the other cultures to respect Black folks, uh, you know, black folks need to have their banks, their finances together, so they so all the cultures can sit down at the table and have respect for, for each other. And, but the problem is, uh, you know, black folks, uh, uh, a lot have been survivors of post-traumatic slave syndrome, and in Africa, uh, definitely the divide and conquer when all of the European company countries got together in 1893 and came up with a plan how we're going to slice and dice Africa. So we're all suffering from the illusion of this white supremacy kind game, which is basically a divisive measure for our species. So what we're working on is how do we bring our species back together and uh, get, get us all at the table. And all of us to come to the table, there needs to be equality. And economic empowerment is one of the components. Uh, Barry, we, you and I have been talking about been talking about uh, the uh, stimulus package that Trump signed off on, including that the uh, uh, communities, the, the intelligence community needs to have, they'll have 180 days to disclose all the information they have on extraterrestrial involvement. And that, that should put it right, right about June. Uh, that's, mm. Is that somewhere close to your birthday, Barry? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that old Chucky syndrome, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that would be a great birthday present if, if they come out and actually uh, disclose what's really going on, would you think? Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, yeah, I think I think so. You know, I have some um, some questions, some doubts, but we'll, we'll discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so, so that, we got some concerns. Yeah, man. yeah. So, so that's the issue because when I when I sent Barry, I said Barry, he said, "Are you sure this is real?" I said, "Well, I sent them the article, and uh, so the, the the issue here is is that you know Barry is concerned, and we all should be concerned because on so many occasions, uh, you know, different agencies that go to Congress." and tell bald faced lies and just deny, lie and say, oh, we don't know about that or we don't have the authority. And, and, and uh, I, so the whole ufologist community should be concerned about that. And we should create uh, an air of oversight to make sure that they come with the truth and, and give full disclosure. But Barry, what, what are your concerns about this whole thing? You know, well, the first thing is that, uh, you know, when before that order was signed, the individual, the leader was asked what he thought about UFOs. He said they didn't exist. He, he doubted they existed, but he's open to it. You know, look, things like that. So what, and what I see is these, Trump, okay. these, these, little, these little pieces of, of what they're calling disclosure. And now you see with like the new age movement and the ufology com community, that's becoming the new um, meal ticket. Talk about disclosure. You've been on Mars. You've been killing reptilians, or whatever the case. So that's that's the kind of, that, that that that's the kind of disclosure that is that is taking the media right now. That people are listening to. All right. So as far as what they're going to release from the government in this uh, eighty days, is it going to be what another one more film that you see something flying around? 
And it's, it, might, it might have extraterrestrial origins. I mean, that's, that's not true disclosure. And for right. me, true disclosure, when it hits us, it's going to come from the lab scientifically. You know, disclosure for me is when I see something in the media that I can trace scientifically that's a discovery they're calling metallic glass. My goodness, that looks a lot like what they were saying that Roswell debris was at first. The same type of a composite before it all got diluted and confounded and everything. But the original back engineered material sounds a lot like that metallic glass. So until it enters our home, a lot of people won't recognize true disclosure. As far as what they're gonna say with the, with the government, I think that you're right. They have to be pushed much harder to give any real information. What about the stuff like what Linda Moulton Howe is talking about on, in, on Earth Files? Some of those whistleblower accounts, that needs to be addressed. The scientific community needs to get involved with this. And that's where I stood up on this. That's why I'm wondering how closely related is this? If you recall, it was about, I think, five years ago that they had that thing in Congress. All those people showed up. Little Moulton Howe, Greer, they all showed up to Congress saying that they wanted information about UFOs and want disclosure. Is, is this a result of that? Or was that just five years of a stagnation that nothing happened? So that's my question. I don't, I don't mean to seem negative about this, but I just have very little trust in the in the, in the powers that be that are causing for this disclosure. This world that we deal with is so, conf it's so contrived that it's just, it's, 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 it's really, and especially as a contactee, I can say that. I wouldn't call myself a ufology, but a true contactee that's seen technology on board these craft, that's felt an energy of vibration from these beings that we're not doing here. We gotcha. gotta catch up if we wanna become anything like what Gene Roddenberry represented in, in Star Trek. You know, we, 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 we need more than just the shell. We need more than just check off. We need the real galactic thing going on. We're talking about non-physical humans. We've got to really get past the problems here. And Lord, for anything to happen before something really bad happens here. I think we're running out of time, but that's another subject. Sorry. <laughs> um, wait, wait, hold, hold, hold up. Um, Man, I, I completely agree with you, especially when you say um, we are a bit, we're a bit skeptical about it. Because mind you, you know, we are, I think everybody on this, on, on, on this show right now is open-minded, but we're also scientific, everybody here. And we're not looking for, for a feel-good disclosure, right? We're not looking for them to say, yeah, UFOs is this, and for us to be like, aha, we told y'all, Right. No, we want the real deal. <laughs> we want to be able to run this through our own scientific analysis and determine what it is that they're actually disclosing and, and what kind of implications that's going to have on us from here on out. So I, um, I, I like your, your, um, your disposition on it. You, you, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and another thing is, you know, we have to consider the political climate. The, you know, when President Trump said that uh, he planned to disclose the information, he planned it during, he planned his real, he planned for it to come out during his reelection, mm -hmm. you know? So right, right. now that we have an administration <laughs> that's bent on destroying everything that he ever created, you mm -hmm. know, you can kind of, you, you can kind of, make an educated assumption that the information that would have happened had Trump been president uh, is probably not the same information that you're going to get in, in this current administration. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. What, what were you about to say, Barry? You know, there's something else. And just when, as far as bringing in, and it's got to be more than just uh, the government and Congress, that's not where this real disclosure is happening. Right now, it's happening with those people that are having experiences. Places like this called the, uh, used to be called the Free Organization, uh, Foundation for Research for Extraterrestrial Encounters, but they changed the name to Conscious and Contact Research Institute, run by Ray Hernandez and several other uh, scientists. You know, they did, they did a study on contact. These experiences are real one. It's like a five-phase intensive I myself only took two and I was going, whoa. So if you're, you know, but they were trying to do it around the world. So you got 
five, 6,000 more people that took this survey and it says something completely contrary to almost everything we hear in the media, especially starting with negative encounters, which do happen frequently, I guess, but to a lot of us, it doesn't. And that's what Andre was kind of leading to just a second ago. So I think that needs to be addressed and that needs to come forward with the scientific community. And then we go forward, forward as far as developing these technologies and things that are kind of, for me, it means nothing to be a contactee uh, experiencer to say, oh, please believe me. Uh, who right. cares about that? It's got to be what do these experiences that impact your life, how can they change your life and benefit you and benefit humanity on a day-to-day -day basis if you're having these experiences? And that's what this coming together is. And so I hope this 80 days is a part of that coming out, some of it, but I think it's going to be just scratching the surface opposed to talking to those of us that are having real contact. And now that I've been talking to so many people for six years since I came forward, I can say that I was right all along. About 80% of our population has had some sort of contact, whether it be in dream state or ancestrally, whatever, but there's been something going on for 80% of our population, although half may be unbeknownst of it, just like they can't remember their dreams. Same type of thing, so food for thought. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> uh, absolutely. So yeah, yeah, and I've been in contact with and and, so, and a lot of uh, uh, black uh, Aboriginal folks are starting to come out, you know, and and not feel like it's taboo and talk about these experiences and different variations, you know. And I'm excited about that. But you know, but the way I the way I look at this, Barry, I, I look at this, you know as you know, I look at it beyond white supremacy. I think white supremacy is just a tool that's used by these low vibrational ETs to manipulate us, uh, you know, and you know, if, if I was an alien and if I wanted to conquer a species because I took the wrong path with AI and destroyed my planet. And I, if I came to a planet like this, or even if I, yeah, and, and, and even if the original people were black, I would create a recessive gene uh, which will be the weakest link to the human species and empower it. And, you know, and explain to it that if you don't uh, do my bidding, uh, you know, you're going to be consumed or eliminated by the original people, uh, of the, the, the melanated people. You know, I think that melanated people are the original people because of the distance that our earth, our planet is from the sun. So the melanated gene protects you from certain uh, UV rays and that sort of thing. And so I, I, if you look at it from that perspective, then, then you'll come to a conclusion, why are black people targeted? Why, why are all the different groups have a work on one accord? We got to keep the black person down. Well, I think they're getting that instruction from their low vibrational extraterrestrials because they know that there are galactic treaties in place that, you know, unless we infiltrate this species and turn them on themselves, we can't touch that uh, melanated uh, species. We have to uh, stand back and allow them to evolve on their own. So, you know, this is why we, you know, encouraging economic empowerment, because the other cultures really don't, you know, don't respect you know, the black culture. And until all of these cultures come to the table, in addition to economic empowerment, the, 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 the melanated people need to know, need to have confirmation because a lot of them are bought into religions that were given to them by other cultures, you know, that copied the original scrolls and, 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 and codes of how to maintain balance on this planet. Can, can, can you work with me on that one, Barry? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, about, um, oh, man, it's been probably about five years ago, I had done a video with these people from Australia, and it was concerning uh, that some of the Aborigines had come forward with relics and other things and saying that they were not just the original people, but that they were seated here from Pleiades, which we hear about so much, but that they were made in the Pleiadians' image. So that means the Pleiadians were extremely dark. The first ones here, melanated extremely, but we never hear that. And that video, I was kind of jumping around all excited because you don't, you know, no, no one, no one talks about that. But that's one issue, or whether we want to take that in 
higher to the levels of some of these conspiracy things that we hear so much hear about, which does include the reptilian agenda and things like that, is that there was a class of uh, melanated extraterrestrials who were able to use the actual black hole of their individual molecules to do like a, a galactic teleport type of thing without technology. Mm. And thus, they were pretty much unable to be conquered by any species, including reptilians or whoever, based on the fact that they can harness the black hole from every molecule. And that's taken it into a very heavy, heavy area. Oh, whoa, whoa, hold, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, better, hold up, brother. We got to emphasize that one. Man, wait a minute. You said they, they utilized the black hole within their own molecular structure? Mm -hmm. You know, since, since since hearing this, let me cut you up. Since hearing this, you know, I got to talk to one. My my, my goal was to talk to real like physical physical physicists and astrophysicists and quantum physicists. I've got to do that a little bit now. But you know, they were having calculations that were attaching what they call the, call the quantum hologram, mm -hmm. that's a part of the new black hole theory, to yeah. actually the molecule itself. So that's the same thing. But I think these are individuals that can use melanin to access the actual core part of that, of the molecule black hole, and then use that as a teleport. So think about somebody that could use a transporter like Star Trek Man. without needing the technology, but could go galactic instead of just from the ship to the planet. I mean, that's probably where it's at. <laughs> this, this, this is what I've been trying to tell Pops for some time. Like, listen, I've been telling like, you know, these, you know the bodies are the best technology going. Yes. Right. Indeed. And yes. I, I will, you know, especially I, I've got my own theory on the Omex, right? You know, just just doing my doing a little bit of research on them, and 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 some of the assumption that they were, in other words, extraterrestrial as well. A lot of the original ones, and but what you don't see is a lot of technology surrounding them in particular. But I was like, you know, the thing is that very, they were very, very heavily melanated. I mean, you could take a look at their face, take a, take a look at their phenotype, you know, and get a gist of their genotype and understand, like, now nah, these dudes are just teleporting in and up out of here, man. They, they ain't need to hop on those ships. You see what I'm saying? So I, when you say that, see, now, now I got to go do some research on that because I'm blown now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well brother, it said. goes, it goes, I don't, I don't want to take us off topic too much, but it goes also into the fact that some of the craft that I've been on board were organic. They were alive, highly, highly sentient. So there's a symbiotic connection between the crew members and the craft itself. You yeah. know what I mean? So that, so that, so that kind of turns into when you have actually life forms that are space life forms that devote, devote themselves to what we call the Merkaba that we can change our form spiritually, our light body into different forms, such as an orb that is more capable of galactic travel, uh, especially in this universe, because it's based on the spin, <clears throat> little things like that. But this is just takes us more into really what some of these crafts that are living alive and the crew too, using this for galactic travel. Just these, 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 these melanated people are doing it without that, but it's the same thing starting to tie together you know what i mean just food for thought if nothing else <laughs> hey, it's, it's more than food for thought brother <laughs> well, i mean <laughs> this, this, this the, the beauty of this is the empowerment because not only do the aboriginal do the black people uh on this planet we are charged with correcting this problem you know and and our ancestors our high vibrational ets know this they are waiting on us because yeah, we're, we're the ones that are going to be the leaders uh, to help resurrect all the cultures, even in the Asian culture, just like recently in, in this Asian country, a uh, dictator decided that they were going to fire all of the, uh, uh, the politicians uh, or the, of the government and just become a, dic a military dictatorship. Mm -hmm. All of these, uh, all of this manipulation uh, is to create chaos and the low vibrational extraterrestrials profit from our chaos, you know? And so, you know, part of what I hope this show does is empower those people, you know, and, and I always live on this theory, the first shall be last and last for sure shall be first. So black folks have been last for a long time and it's time for them to take their position, but not with animosity, 
not with retribution, because you have to understand that all of these issues were created to help us evolve as a species. How do we overcome the ignorance? How do we overcome these low vibrational extraterrestrials using these divide and conquer tactics to enslave us mentally, spiritually, and psychologically <laughs> while they take advantage of the resources on this planet. You know, so once we, once we take position on our planet as the guardians, then we have to bring our Caucasians, our Asians, uh, uh, all of our people together, understanding, okay, we got played, you know? So, so now we are awakened. And that's why this disclosure thing is so critical, uh, you know, that we, we, the melanated people, need to know the truth. We need to stop following a religion that was set up by the reptilians to divide and conquer us and put faith in, a, in imaginary images when the, when the power of the universe is right in our bodies. You know, mm -hmm. so, so, mm -hmm. so Barry, it's part of the disclosure piece. Isn't it true, or there are theories, that Truman and Eisenhower met with these extraterrestrials and different occasions, the low vibrational ones, and cut deals in exchange for those these low grade technology, you know, and and sold that technology to corporate America who created the military industrial war complex to continue this chaos, murder, death, and destruction. And and and, and they don't want full disclosure because then they're gonna have to uh, uh, show up and say okay, we got this technology with your tax money and then we're charging you for it. We're enslaving you for it. We're imprisoning your young men. We are raping your daughters to, uh, to a point to, for, in order for them to pay rent. You know, so is, isn't that all coming into focus in, in, from that matter, Barry? Well, yeah. And the fact, I mean, it's very simple. The plain old Willie Lynch syndrome applies not to just melanated people that were enslaved in this country, but it's being done on a galactic level for yes, us yes. completely. Yes. I mean, we can't, we can't get past that. And I have a heck of a time sometimes trying to describe some of my experiences. It's with non-humans, non-humans, man. And, you know, we're so tripping out on race right now. We can't even get to that point yet. No one is where to hear that talk about what it's talking about dealing with entities that might even not have bodies, but very present thought forms. Okay. Yes. Things we can evolve into if we don't get off track too much or be destroyed. You know what I mean? So I agree. What you're saying is very important. And right now, that, that type of division and the type of dark activities that you see just constantly on this planet, it's frightening. Yeah. You know, you know, so so I mean, and it's it, the division, it, it starts though with the race first and then goes outwards. But for us, it's messing everything up. And once again, I think that's something that was Star Trek was trying to represent, especially the first ones, that how do we go forward back into what they call in a type one civilization? You know, that's we're close to that now. But if we don't get over this hump. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah. Yeah, this, yeah. This, this is a critical hump without, without a question. You know what? As a matter of fact, um, Barry, you just said some, um, uh, you, just, you just made a point that sparked or, or, or made me remember a conversation I was actually having with uh, uh, Miss, Miss KB the plug down here. <laughs> um, when you say, you know, we either have to go in the direction of, of, of type one, type two, and so on and so on type civilizations or be destroyed in the event that we don't get destroyed. Right. And, you know, we, we, we start tumbling down this, right? <laughs> we start tumbling down this path um, towards type one, type two civilizations. Like you say, we we at the brink of a type one right now. We can be doing a whole lot better, but we just got way too much toxic capitalism going on. But, um, you know, technology is, 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 is an inevitable process for, for a lot of planets. For, for, for a lot of beings throughout the universe. In these, you look, in these phases where, you know, they start getting to a point to where the technology starts getting a little bit more advanced, regardless, regardless of whether it was hand-me-down or, 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 or uh, uh, reverse engineered or not, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? We have it now. And so we're, we, you know, we're having a better understanding on it and a better understanding on developing it further. So now we get into a conversation 
on AI because that's where we're at right now, right? That's where we're at. And so I was having a conversation with, with, uh, with, with, with KB the other, the other night, and she said, hey, uh, there's people selling virtual real estate right now. Yes. <laughs> what? And I said, I said, I said, elaborate for me, please, right? And she was like, nah, there's, there, there's a woman that she, she just sold like $10 million or she owns $10 million yeah. worth of virtual reality real estate. Let me, let me, let me go ahead and get into it. So just like the Sam's game or the Grand Theft Auto game, now and, and they, they have virtual reality simulations to where people can go in there with real deal money and go buy a simulated acre of, of, of space in a, in, a, in a virtual reality simulation, right? Yeah. In a virtual reality simulation. And people are- Hold on, bro, I'm gonna interrupt you, but hold on. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Keep, ahead. Yeah, I don't mean to interrupt you, sir, but uh, <laughs> do you keep the helmet on and then kind of just walk through there every day? You just kind of live up in there? They want I mean, that's, 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 that's what they want to do, bro. That they want to live yeah. there. Yes, that's that's the concept is, you know, you, you don't like this life here? Create what you want. And paying, like, real hard, like, Fed notes for it. And, it you know, when I saw it, I was like, wait, what? You know, at first I thought it was, you know, because I, cause I, I like, you know, I, I, I like assets. So I was like, oh, you mean like domain space? Like, it was like, no, we, no, no. The, I mean, entire world. Oh, I grew some, I grew some tobacco and I'm going to sell you some. Oh, you need some lumber? Well, this is how much it's going to cost you. You know, hey, I've got this plot and I'm leasing my land. You know, oh, I'm going to build a house. I got to, you know. Yeah, I need, I, I need workers. I need contractors, all of that. All of that. In Companies, virtual space. <laughs> you know, whole lives, whole worlds. Yes. Families. Okay. Yeah. All right, so so wait, hold on. All right, so here's what, uh, Barry, we, we, I want, we want to get some information from Kimberly, uh, you know, and, and when, we, when, when she finishes up, Barry, we, need, we want to talk about uh, deeding our property over to the reptilians. Mm. <laughs> so, mm. uh, you know, there's got to be some aspect of that happening here somewhere. I, I, I'm just so <laughs> this this Asian lady. You know, she she just she. Uh, how did she come? How did she fall into it? She she knows how to. Uh, she she was a game developer or mm. coder, and so because she knew how to. Uh, create those programs then she became uh she found out other people were interested in it and then went on to to barter with people hey i'll create you this world this virtual reality world that you want since you don't know how to create trees and grass and houses but you're going to pay me for it and as a result she she's the wealthiest um virtual land owner virtual property owner um in the world right right now and 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 that community is growing it i you yeah. know when i fell on it this past week i was like whoa <laughs> whoa like this this they're creating wealth out of like air yeah. like imagination like and that's that's the name of the game you know so kimberly kimberly um uh... But first, I'm, I'm going to do, you know, you know, to our listening audience, you know, this is this mindset baffles me. And, and even, you know, uh, this Caucasian guy put put out on a, a Instagram or something that he was running low on money for beer and he needed to buy some beer. And he got two hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, donations to help him buy beer, you know. And so, uh, you know, this mindset is is dangerous you know to the human species yeah. and, and so what i want to say to our listeners we have people like barry he is an advanced high vibrational human right here on earth uh barry and i and our organization uh he he don't know this yet but they the, the guardians transmitted we're going to be working on a documentary and a full feature movie 
on um, all the things that we've been working on. We're going to collaborate on that. I know you, I know you get the download, Barry. <laughs> and so, so if you're going to donate to some foolishness, invest in foolishness, why don't you invest? We got, we got Barry Littleton. We have Dr. B that was on the show last week. My son and I, we're developers. We're scientists. We're building a reality in this reality on turning our species around. We're not racist. You know, we understand the dynamics of how souls incarnate into bodies. We understand that, you know, even in, in, in a lot of Caucasians that envy uh, Black people because of certain attributes, physical attributes they have. And, and so, you know, we're encouraging you to understand that, you know, in, in the next life, depending on how you do in this life, you can possess one of those great Nubian bodies. Even, even with, with my DNA, I'm always, I would like to improve it. I'd rather have me a, a six foot four dark chocolate Nubian say, male say, body say, say that can Black. run a, a 4 two forty <laughs> and do all and shoot basketball. Not just for the sports aspect of it. Believe me, you know, I know the reptilians and the extraterrestrial control in the sports game too, but just the beauty of that body. You earn that mm -hmm. body through how you treat people in this life. You mm -hmm. know, you, it's an upgrade. Mm -hmm. So I yes. just I just want to say if you want to invest, go to UPA. ALL.com, reach out to our president, Brenda Allen. You know, all of that information is on the website. Make some donations. If you want to help Barry and I do this movie that you will be in, you know, donate to it. You know, if, if, if you're going to buy, help spend 200, get $200,000 to a guy because he needed some beer, why don't you invest in something that's real, something that's spiritual, something that's going to turn around our predicament here on this planet because we got a very short time to come together as one, one species, humans of planet Earth. But go ahead, Kimberly, give us your take on the economic empowerment. Give everybody updates on things that are going on in the tax world and what happened. Okay. Well, as far as taxes, uh, if if you don't, if if everybody doesn't already know, uh, the tax deadlines have been extended. So that means we have a longer time to get our affairs in order. Um, if in fact you haven't, um, if it's been a little while, it's been a few years since you filed your taxes, I do have some people who can help. Uh, New Living Taxes is a company that specializes in late files or no files over an extended period of time. Um, they, they are, uh, IRS agents. And so what that means is you don't have to worry about being audited or anything um, uh, about the status or anything related to the accounting of your taxes because they'll handle it all. But the best part about it is that it's touch-free, hands-off, you know, no offices, no getting around other people's germs because that's the day and time we're living in. Um, all of this can be done from the comfort of your home and your phone. Uh, fill out a couple of forms, submit your documents on a double encrypted um, safe um, platform, and uh, you know we'll, the organization will take it from there. So in order to contact them, newlivingtaxes.com. They're online, www.newlivingtaxes.com. Type it in the comment section too when you get a chance. <laughs> so, and to be on that, we have the PPP program. So, the last uh, few rounds of the PPP, you know, the first one that was snatched up by all the large corporations, everybody was kind of uh, disenfranchised. Um, the second round, they tried to do a little better about it. So, they, you know, the, the mid, uh, to large corporations kind of had their due. And now this time it's the um, presentation has been that it's for the smaller businesses. Now, what, um, what Five for Excellence has done is make sure that individuals or sole proprietors have access to the PPP program as well. And so they have a formula that they've devised 
um, that is on par with the SBA requirements that will ensure that the individual, okay, like you and me, um, if you have a business, if you have a hobby that you're turning into a business, that you can qualify for those um, PPP stimulus funds. Now, the thing about this program is that if you um, follow the instructions, you know, the um, the terms, which is most of it is to be distributed to hire employees because this is stimulating the economy. That was the goal of the, pro the stimulus package. Mm -hmm. As long as you follow those terms, then everything that you've paid out is forgiven. So mm -hmm. if you follow the the program stipulations, then there is a very good chance that you will um, turn what was intended to be a loan into a grant by it being forgiven. So if you'd like more information about how to uh, qualify for this program as an individual, then Five for Excellence is the organization you wanna contact. Um, and that is five, F-I-V-E, the number four, excellence at gmail.com. Send a note, hey, I wanna know more about this, you know, sole proper individual uh, stimulus package offer. And you'll get some next steps on how to, what you need to do for this process. Okay, so uh, take, take advantage of this information. Again, you know, economic empowerment is one of the foundations uh, of what this show is all about. It's, all, it's about bringing balance because as, as long as any one, any one culture is out of balance, is still suffering, we as a species, we're not representing to the most high that we're capable of being civilized. If you're gonna step on uh, your cousin, you know, because their skin is darker, you know, it, that, that's a representation to the ETs that you are not on a high vibrational level and you are not able or capable of running your own planet. And, and that's where we are now. We're at that precipice of impressing these entities. Their, their technology is far greater than all of these low vibrational extraterrestrials technology. As Barry explained, they, they're operating on a totally different non-physical level where these low vibrationals, they have, they have to have devices, equipment, and, and they have to feed, uh, feed off of us as a species, extract minerals and all that. You know, so, so if we, we continue to allow them to pimp us, we're, we're going to lose our lease on this planet. Barrett, one of the things that, you know, I stopped putting pieces together. I was in Washington, D.C. back in 1980 when the first, I believe, the first gentrification plan was implemented. Uh, you know, during the Reagan administration with Bush as vice president. And it was a work of art how they started to take over D.C., how they corrupted the D.C. government, which was 65 to 70 percent uh, of black people, how they brought, started pink slipping people, put in a, another uh, 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 mayor to start pink slipping people and, and, and they start losing their jobs, their homes. They went in with second uh, trust money. Uh, to to uh, eventually foreclose on those properties. I mean, it, it was a work of art, how they divided up the ministers, got them to run for different offices to, to water down the vote to make sure that they get their uh, uh, kind of house Negro in place to do their bidding. You know, so, but, you know, it, it forced them, the people, to sell their property. And so the, 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 the final plan was uh, um, people, different cultures coming in paying enormous amounts of money to acquire your property. And, and I started thinking about it. You know, I saw it happening in Nashville, Tennessee. I saw it happening in Columbus, Ohio, you know, uh, in different parts of the country. And I'm going like, you know, what if, you know, we, we understand these people are working from a reptilian or Luciferian agenda, but what if there was a, a, an agreement with the low vibrational beings who represented the, the reptilians who were forced from the surface to the subterranean, what if they had a, 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 a treaty that in order for the reptilians to get the surface land back on the surface, 
if they can convince humans through stupidity and ignorance and selfishness to deed the property back to them, then, then those reptilians can come back to the surface. That, it was just a wild thought. I'm going like, because technically, you know, a, a lot of these uh, groups, and particularly Caucasian groups, buy into this illusionary banking system that they really don't control. These other extraterrestrials control this. So my mind went off of that. And, I, and Barry, I'm, I'm trying to run that past your mind and see how you bring it all into perspective. Well, maybe taken <clears throat> with a slightly different perspective, all right, but kind of inclusive, would be in the work I've done, I have seen extreme generational curses attached to the land. So when you've got land, especially the land like, like around where I live, that has just has had tons of blood spilled on it through war. You've got often a lot of the manifestations of negative entities, real ones, whether they be lizards or something much worse, shadows or something much worse, inorganic evil, they use manifesting through the blood. Thus, blood sacrifice, all these things we always see. So we see that these generational curses are very tied to the land. People get attached to it, and then there are entities that come off the land that inhabit and attach to bloodlines, and they go on and on and on. So that's one problem. So that, that, so that takes us also into the realm of not just extraterrestrial, but the realm of earthbound spirits, our ancestors that don't cross over because they're still attached to the land. And then we've got you know, negative inorganic beings on us, on our children, because they've been passed forward. Somebody else, ancestors ago, was messing with dark magic or whatever, messing, mess, making deals with this for this land. We see that melanated and melanated recessive. It seems to go all around this planet on that. The land, the land, you know. But that's just another way to kind of think, evaluate that and just how it can actually ruin our immediate lives our immediate connection with our families, especially, and give us generational curses. They're attached to the land, especially if you've got land that's had war on it or slavery, any of these things, man, that, that, that holds negative vibrations. It holds mm -hmm. phantoms from the past, stay in that, that area. So, you know, just, just food for thought, if nothing else, but I'm not disagreeing with you, but I think that we got to even just get through what's happening on the negative and organic being first there. I mean, they're really, using the land to attach, just like they do negative emotions. You know what I mean? They get in negative emotions. We hold that in our organs. They yeah. ways to get that out of, to bring that out of us, get through our shields. People like us are protected. So they create all these different things around us to create these stresses on our shields, to create these little cracks in several different ways. They attack you by your finances, with racism, with uh, through your loved ones. That gets to the heart chakra. They're trying to get to the heart chakra, creates these little shields, and it brings. Then they bring it up out of your emotions, out of your organs. That's a very one of the tactics they use. You tap, you couple that with the land you just spoke of. Very definitely negative tactics. Inorganic. Neg we'll say negative inorganic being tactic techniques. They use that to destroy us, keep us imprisoned here, and keep the awakening from going on. Whatever's happening mm -hmm. right now is the turning point to where if this awakening, this consciousness change continues to go along with the pole shift, there's a chance that humanity can stay being the custodians of this planet like we're supposed to be instead of the, the multitude of negative beings that want to come in here and take over or other galactic beings that would be happy to take over this sphere. Absolutely. The custodians. Yeah. yeah. They're all because of our selfishness and ignorance, you know. Yeah. So, so you kind of confirm. Your question, I didn't go too far off, but no, no, no. Good. Good. But, but you kind of confirm a theory that I mentioned on a previous show, you know, about um, you know uh, the old Bruce Lee movie, and you know the the Asians, the old guard Asians were angry at Bruce Lee because he was going to share the his techniques with black. Americans and Caucasian Americans. And they, and they were mad and said, we don't want you to share that with them. He said, because they are the enemy. And I went like, wait, hold on, hold on. We the black folks, we're not the enemy. You know, uh, we, we've been suppressed by the Caucasians. But then I thought about it, you know, 
uh, you know, because the laws of karma, uh, there are a lot of black folks that are walking around here that were Caucasian folks in pre previous lives because of some horrible things they done, did in a yeah. previous life to black people. And so now they're having to come back and walk a mile in the shoes of a black person. And so, I, and, and I work with them. I see them all the time. And you can talk to them until you're blue in the face. They have eyes, that, but they can't see what you're saying or ears, they can't hear what you're saying, you know. Uh, and so all of this karmatic debt, you know, is regenerating itself through these families. And, and so now, you know, we, we you know, we're, be, we're gonna, blacks and Caucasians, are going to be targeted because we are inter intertwined, you know, through these relationships on the land. But and, and but the ignorance, and I've experienced it even in my own family, and just recently, a very close friend of mine, uh, you know, when the family member died, then the property came available. Then all the, all the different family members, I got my own agenda. So some of those that were probably the Caucasians that did some horrible things, you know, in a previous life, that are now black folks saying, "Nah, I don't, I don't want to build a common agenda. So let's sell the property so I can go buy some shiny things <laughs> or buy a new car that's going to depreciate." But that land is that land is going to only appreciate, you know, in time. And so, you know, this is one of the things that we try to get over to people. You are deeding your when you sell your land to individuals that say, "I'll pay you." $200,000 for some land or, or property, you know, it, they know that when things, when the transition happened, that that property is going to be worth to their economic system $2 million. So they'd be glad to pay you $200,000, you know, and then when you deed it over to them, you will not be able to come back. And if, and if a whole, and so if that person is beholding to the reptilian agenda, then technically, the reptilians can foreclose on that human because that human so betrayed their species in exchange for illusionary money and power over our, 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 our other humans. Okay. All right. All right. You know, even more intense is that the love of land is one of the primary factors to keep someone as an earthbound spirit from crossing over. They're so worried about that land, so worried about that crib, worried about who's going to be up in there, worried about what's going on next. I mean, and they, they be there and they don't yeah. cross over and they become earthbound spirits. And that is spiritually a very serious problem on this planet, because I swear to you, as I sit here before you, <laughs> I have found out that the earthbound spirits here, the population is as numerous as the living walking this planet. That Whoa. is a serious issue, a big one. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, I, and I find interesting, a lot of people who call themselves mediums and stuff we hear so much on these circuits and things are talking about that, are talking about how there's deceased people entwined in our energy field, ones that a lot of us that can see can't see them because they're not on the outside of the energy field. Not just that they're disembodied, but they're not on the outside. They're entwined within us through negative behavior patterns. And that's how we, how we start expressing that. That's a true possession. Anyway, but that's just yeah. another problem amongst all these others, what you're talking about. That's so common on this planet. And that's one layer that is not being even acknowledged and kind of uh, cured to that degree. You know, it's a very, very, very dangerous place here. It, 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 it is, um, I, I'd always said, and, you know, even before it became a, a catchphrase that, you know, we're in a, we're, this is a, this is a war of spirits or spiritual war. And um, one of the things personally that I've done is really try to uh, manage or master, you know, what's, what's going on within me. What are my attachments? What are the things that, you know, I need to let go of, you know, when are the times when I am triggered to uh, less than desirable behavior. What does that look like, right? <laughs> Seriously, because we all go through it. And, you know, as a mental health professional, because that was my background um, wow. academically, you know, I, I kind of go a little deeper because I had these spiritual tugs at me. I, I had a, I had a um, spiritual awakening at a very early age 
um, that my coming of age was coming into uh, uh, spirituality and out of religion. So it was a very heavy time for me. And when Barry, when you talked about the the spirits, um, you know, um, um, communicating, I I had an experience that lasted for about two weeks. I mean, it scared me to the point I was I didn't want to sleep because every time I closed my eyes, it was there. And I've since, you know, reconciled and, and I understand and I appreciate that experience. But a lot of people just shut it down or shut it off through, you know, name it, medications, drugs, distractions, materialism, right? And yeah. so I say that to say that it's, you know, it's a, every day, it's a constant, you know, internal battle that not a lot of people want to acknowledge, but it's, it's as real as, as we are. Right. Um, one of the one of the people that I've come across that has made it his mission to uh, to to wake up the masses is an a, an astrologer, and he's also a clinical hypnotist, a hypnotherapist um, named Astro Einstein. Astro Einstein is. Um, it's, it's his it's his purpose he he talks about um on various platforms how he goes into uh he helps people with past past life regressions you know making sense of what your life's purpose is why you have certain events what happened to your childhood can you connect with your loved ones and he assists as a guide to the person who wants to delve into what their past lives were, you know, what if there were any curses and how to break them um, through um, metaphysics and uh, spiritual practice. Okay. Um, it's taken off there. He's on yeah. tour now from, he's in Vegas now on a tour from California to Florida nationwide. And uh, on astronsign.com, you can see uh, his his uh, website, Live. his offerings. He yeah. goes on on Facebook, and I say that because um, Andre is hosting the astrology class. Um, yeah. third, what, what? How many generations are we, Andre Senior Junior? Oh, uh, I, I'm 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 a third generation. Well, really, really, you're fourth because your grand your great grandfather was a naturalist doctor, so he gotcha. was practicing the natural sciences back in the '30s. Yeah, so, yeah. so that transferred to your grandmother, and then to me, and then to you. Gotcha, gotcha. But yeah, um, so say say a fourth generation naturalist and metaphysician. How about that? <laughs> How about that? That's what I am. Um, and I partnered up with uh, Astro Einstein uh, and, you know, we're hosting uh, three astrology classes right now and we'll be starting next week. Mine will be starting on the 13th. Um, if you go to my page, AndreHillJr.com, I've got the link to the uh, to the form. If, if, if you want to join, uh, you still got some time. You still get in there. And and, you know, I. I ain't toot my own horn, but I'm, I'm I'm serious about this astrology stuff. I kind of taking it, take taking it to the next level. It's it's a beginner's course too. So for everybody who is, you know, just getting into it, just just trying to figure out how astrology works because it's such a vast science. I know it's hard to find where you want to start. I've been doing it for 20, 20 plus years. Um, you know, we got a very structured curriculum that you know we're gonna take you take you through the, um, the foundation of it and, and get the, and get the sac sacred geometric uh, 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 software downloaded into your head so you can understand it very, very well. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, so, so uh, Barry, I'm, you, you've provided, go ahead. Yeah. No, so I'm gonna say first, Kimberly, I think that was very well put, very well said. You know, I've not heard of this gentleman. Um, I'm a hypnotist myself. I don't talk about that a whole lot. But, you okay. know, something that you mental, you mentioned mental health or mental illness or mental health. Yes. And something that I can really relate to is that when dealing with not just the client itself in hypnotherapy, but also the deceased people that are attached that will come forward if you know how okay. to 
access yes. them, they naturally will come forward. It will trip you yes. out. Yes. But you know, it's truly using cognitive behavioral on Indeed. not just not just the client, but on these earthbound spirits. And Absolutely. I'm not talking about, like Andre and, and Kim, I'm not talking about the demonic level, level. I'm talking about lost earthbound spirits. And I found for the most part, a lot of them will cross over fairly easy. Mm. So, it's, so it's very interesting. And when you start going into that, you have some of these beings that are attached to somebody, they're joined, and they're joined to somebody that they know that they knew from another life. All right. So, I mean, you, so you've got, you've got beings that won't cross over and other people that are coming back and they're reattached into them. Mm. That is a serious problem. What do you got a culture that won't even admit past lives? Anyway, right. I said up there. Exactly. I just want to say, I, I respect what everybody's saying, especially Kim. I thought that was, Kimberly, I thought that was beautiful and well put. So I'll thank say you. thank you. The, so, the other thing that I do want to point out here, and you know, that I, I'll forever be a mental health advocate. Um, um, it is is that we, you know, and and Barry, when you talked about how, uh, how you know we come back, we have these different, we have past lives that 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 is the spirit, and we just we just this this body is just you know a vessel, literally, right over hundreds of lifetimes. And how, you know, depending on the karma, the good or bad karma, because everybody has a mission because we're on this, this plane of duality. So good, evil, light and dark exists, right? That, you know, you may come, you, you, you may have an experience as a white person because of X, Y, and Z. You may come back, you know, as a black person, you may come back rich, you may come back poor, you may come back in the first, you know, in a, in a third world country versus a developed one, right? Um, <laughs> um, but what we, but what we really don't talk about enough is how the people who can actually see, I'm, I, I feel, I don't see my mother saw, right. Mm -hmm. My mother is in a psychiatric hospital and has been there for most of her life because she saw things before they happened. 10 years ago, mama was talking about bugs in your eyes and bugs in the tv and here we are scanning our eyes with cameras in the tv mm. but when she was saying that 10 years ago you know she was crazy yeah, yeah. She was, ahead she of was time. About, you know yeah yeah so uh, go ahead so, go on. yeah so and, and i wanted to get this in real quick because we're at the top of the hour uh because barry what you've done basically is provided some therapy even for me uh because i remember you know my family uh when, when we we had a business loan back in the 70s uh, uh to to develop a product and then that's when i realized that this uh luciferian white supremacy agenda did not want black people to be producers. We were actually had a product producing, uh, manufacturing, a food processing plant. Mm. And so they attacked us from corporate America uh, through the SBA and basically forced us out of business. And so we were forced, in, we had a position where we could have reorganized, uh, but our family members, you know, being influenced by the spouses no, you're going to get your money out of this, sell the property. And I was so angry. I didn't speak to my family members for five years. I, and, and, and I know I had the ability of astral projection. At times, you know, I appreciated my, the family property that my father built, you know, from the ground up. And, and, and we just end up selling it f with nonsense when, when we could have kept the property use it as an asset into a trust fund to build businesses. But we got all these different separate agendas, you know, and, and that sort of thing. And true enough, if I would have passed, before, you know, uh, before time, I would have been attached to that property. I know that. I would have been angry. I was angry mm -hmm. when we sold it. So that that's real. And, 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 and so but I had to transcend upon that to understand, well, not only this little pot, piece of property, uh, ours, this whole planet is ours. So I had to transcend to that state of mind of understanding, oh no, this is a bigger mission. This was a sacrifice to get me to wake up. So that that so you provided good therapy. Hopefully a lot of other people heard and understood what you were saying. Uh, you know, again, 
Uh, you know, this has been the U- the the uh, get ready to say the UPA agenda. <laughs> this has been the Straight Talk Morning Show. Um, but I, I want to emphasize: you have in this collective of the UPA, the Urban Progress Alliance, nonprofit organization, and the Straight Talk Morning Show, the collaboration with Barry, the collaboration with Dr. B. We have everything to bring you to a higher level or take you to a higher level of spiritual uh, 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 intelligence. We have that, those things. We have the ability to transcend beyond this chaos. If you wanna, if you wanna invest in something, invest in the UPA agenda, keep listening to the straight talk. We're gonna bring it live. We're gonna bring you the truth. All of these doctrines or the dogma saying what can't, what's not, you know, all of that was designed to keep you limited and oppressed. You know, uh, uh, and your spirituality is not evolving. We're going to take you out of that box and take you to a different level. So go to UPAALL.com, join up with the Senate set to tell us you want to be a part. We'll give you updates. Uh, donate to us because, you know, uh, the bank cartel, are not they're going to uh, uh, tell their banks not to invest in us because we are bringing the true issue of spiritual evolution, of how we're gonna bring our species, no matter what color, what's your skin color, what's, what religion you were brought up in, it's now time to graduate out of that limited, the limitations of that religion and expand yourself to universal thought. Uh, you know, So that's that's what the Straight Talk Morning Show is all about. That's what UPL is all about. Barry, you have any closing words? Uh, no, thank you for having me on, definitely. If anybody wants to try to catch up with me, I do a lot on YouTube. You can find me there under Barry Littleton, but I appreciate you having me on and for the different perspective and kind of bringing this all together because I think it it touched on several different aspects of it. So I think that's important. So so Barry, I'm going to put this out there. I know they, the Guardian is going to download this to you. If you are a script writer, if you're a video uh, technician, we are going to be doing a, a documentary slash movie that, that's gonna, that will rival the, the fiction of Wakanda to the reality of a new world age uh, a civilization. And uh, if you want to make a donation, want to be a part of that, if, you, if you're in the movie business and you want to join, Barry and I, we already have all the information. It just need to be formatted into a script. We need the, the video uh, people, the special effects people, come join us. There is, the, the, if you know of a better organization, that's, that's going to help with this paradigm shift, let us know. We will join up with them because we are evolving spiritually. Uh, hey, son, you got uh, any last words? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, one thing I want to really make uh, clear as to you know what Pops is saying right now, why he's emphasizing joining up with us, why he's emphasizing that we... Uh, start gathering resources. In other words, you guys either donate in time, money, resources, or connections to this, this collective. This is why, you know, especially getting on the topic about the land. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really glad you, you touched on that, Barry. So you know, with our organization, we're not, we're not uh, 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 power hungry or we're not capitalistic mongers. Do we need uh, some money right now to go and acquire land. Yes. Why? Why? Is because we want to be able to build these spiritual and self-sustainable microcosms. We're not. We're not going to. We're not going to be uh, uh, selfishly or, or frivolously attached to the land. But we know that we have to get into a position to where we are harmonizing with nature. Absolutely. As long as we are selling our land, or and or we are willing to to uh, uh, live in these in these homogenized type of uh, uh, communities, we know we're not going to be get attached to the land, and we're, we're not going to get attached to the land in a sense of being able to harmonize with it. We're not going to be able to 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 ascend because we because right now we're we're uh, you know as, as as an entire civilization we're very infantile. So we're going to have to learn to walk before we start crawling as a collective. And that's fine. 
that's fine. Let's let's have some fun along the way. Let's grow, have fun, and learn how to harmonize with this planet. Because once you harmonize with this planet, you can harmonize with any planet in, in, in the entire universe. Absolutely. Right? So, mm -hmm. so, again, this is the type of lifestyle that we have to ascend. We, we really don't have a choice, family. We really don't have a choice. Because like we've discussed this entire show, you have a multitude of negative entities, some very some negative energy, some yes. very, very parasitic entities out there who just like, just like any parasite that you, that you know, they ain't going to stop until they get their fill of you. And then they're just going to move on somewhere. So that's, that's not an option as far as I'm concerned. Right. So just like pops emphasize, just like Barry emphasize, just like Kim emphasize, um, let's pull some resources together. Let mind you, not trying to go too much off on a tangent tangent when we're thinking about these you know the, this fiat this money we, we know it's fake we know it's monopoly money but right now the stage that we're in we know we need it in order to acquire material that we need in order to incubate ourselves on a high vibration that makes sense <laughs> that good. makes sense all right yeah. so so family uh this has been the Straight Talk Radio Show. Barry, brother, we really, really appreciate you coming on today. Really appreciate you coming back. You know you're going to be back again, so just get, get prepared for that. Cam, yeah. just a look, look, look. I'm really, really proud of you for your debut show. Now, <laughs> Thank you. And we, we, we know, you know, you are always welcome as well. We, we can have you back as, you know, whenever you guys... Uh, whenever we reach out to y'all, we're like, hey, y'all want to do a show. Whenever y'all got, got something to say, just let us know and we'll have you back. And look, I'm taking that intro to astrology class you're teaching because I want to oh, learn. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. As, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So, so on, our, on our next upcoming show, Barry, uh, if, if you could, uh, I, we're going to check. We, I, we, we have two KBs. We got our executive producers, yes. KB, as well. <laughs> yes. So uh, we need to check our schedule. Uh, but it. But our next show, Barry, should be focusing on how do we access the different realms of metaphysical energy to overcome this negative energy. So you can get that some thought. That would be our next show as soon as, uh, as the executive producer can schedule you in. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, All right, family. Close, close it out, son. Well, all right. It's been the Straight Talk Network show. We love y'all, family. Peace and love, and we see you next time. All right.